시작하겠습니다. 이 just made this cinematic short film really quickly for my channel. And honestly, after finishing the video, I was truly impressed by how far AI has come. Being able to generate content fully automatically and so fast is just amazing. This video was inspired by the Squid Game Season 3 trailer, and the full season is set to release at the end of this month on Netflix. As a huge fan of Squid Game, I watched the trailer and immediately felt inspired to experiment. What came out is the video you just watched. Pretty impressive, right? Don't worry. In this video, I'm going to break down exactly how I made it step by step, and how you can easily create a realistic and cinematic video using some of the best AI tools available today. If you're new to the channel, I'm Gary, an AI content creator here on YouTube. I teach everything about AI-generated content, from philosophy-style scripts, to stick figures, to advanced cinematic filmmaking. If you enjoy content like this, don't forget to subscribe. It really motivates me to keep making even better videos in the future. Now, let's get back to the main topic. How do you create a cinematic short film inspired by Squid Game like this one? In this video, I'll walk you through every step, from generating the images to turning them into video, and finally, combining and editing everything in CapCut quickly and efficiently. This specific video doesn't use a script or voiceover. It's purely driven by visuals and sound effects, so I won't be covering script writing or narration here. Let's not waste any more time. Let's dive into the first part, how I generated all the images for this video. First of all, all of my images were generated using ChatGPT, and this is the very first image I created. As you can see, my initial idea was to use my own face as part of the demo for this video. But after generating this image, I realized it didn't really fit the scene or contribute to the overall impact of the video. So, I decided to change the concept and use the main character from Squid Game Season 3 for the demo instead. To generate this image, I used the following prompt. The main contestant, number 456, stands frozen in shock under warm spotlights in the arena. His bloodied tracksuit and red X mark reflect despair. Background contestants watch silently from darkened tiered seating, faces blurred. The lighting is focused and theatrical, capturing a moment of intense realization. I simply copied this prompt and ran a quick demo again so you can easily understand how it works. In a new thread, I typed, please create a landscape image, and then pasted my prompt below that. With this prompt, you can see how ChatGPT automatically understands that you want to generate a scene inspired by Squid Game. And it even creates a character with a face very similar to the main contestant, without you needing to specify that in the prompt. Very impressive from ChatGPT. However, the real question here is, how did I come up with that prompt in the first place? Of course, I get it. I know what you're thinking. Creating prompts must be difficult, but actually, it's much easier than you think. I simply used ChatGPT itself and asked it to create a storyboard prompt list for me. In a new ChatGPT thread, I just entered a simple prompt like this. I want to create a short film video for Squid Game Season 3 trailer. Please generate a storyboard with 10 prompts for generating images each prompt representing a different scene that matches the Squid Game theme. High quality prompts only. Then just click submit and you're done. You can also adjust the number of prompts depending on what you need. In just a few seconds, I had a full set of high quality prompts with minimal effort. All I needed was a quick review. I scrolled up to the top and copied the prompt for scene one, the invitation returns. I copied the entire prompt and opened a new thread in ChatGPT to continue the demo. Same steps as before. 
ask ChatGPT to create a landscape image, then paste the prompt. Now let's review the result. First, you'll notice that ChatGPT generated a square image instead of a landscape. This is pretty common when working with it. If that happens, my advice is simple. Start a new thread and try again from scratch. The image it created was decent in quality, but to be honest, I wasn't fully satisfied with it. To get results as good as mine, you have two options. Continue prompting and manually refining the image, or generate a large batch of images and filter the best ones. I prefer option two. And if you've seen my earlier videos, you'll know that I use my own batch generation script for this process. Back in the thread where I created the 10 prompts earlier, I continued by asking, I want output format like this. Return a downloadable JSON file containing an array of objects. Each object should represent one visual prompt and include file name, a unique ID in the format 001-squid, incrementing by one for each entry prompt, a detailed description of the image. This lets ChatGPT generate a JSON file, which I use as input for my script. Once the file was created, I clicked the download link and saved it to my local machine. Then I opened the file, copied its contents, and pasted everything into my allprompts.json file. In the Visual Studio Code terminal, I simply typed pibatchcreate.py, and within 30 seconds, all 10 images were generated at once. It's very fast, and as you'll see, the image quality is way better than when using the UI. That's because I define it as high quality, whereas the UI typically limits you to medium quality. If you want realistic quality like this, you must run it with high quality settings. Of course, I could have requested 100 prompts or even 1000, and the script would have generated all those images according to my input. But just a quick reminder, this isn't free. If you're serious about quality, investing in the right tools and methods makes all the difference. All right, now let's move on to the next part, how to animate these images. And for this, the tool I'm using is Kling AI. In this section, I'll walk you through exactly how I used Kling AI step by step. I'll also show you all the videos I generated using it, along with the full prompts I used for each one. Honestly, with Kling AI 2.1, the amount of editing I need to do has dropped significantly because it now supports built-in sound effects for every video. This is a game-changing feature that I really appreciate, beyond just the video quality Kling AI already delivers. Let's go back to the first video. For this one, I used a simple prompt, create cinematic scene. Then, on the same image, I added another prompt. The camera rotates around the subject. This is the video I used in my demo clip. That camera rotation prompt is one I personally really like, and I use it often because it works so well. Next up is another video. For this one, I used the prompt. The man in a green jacket with red accents and 461 on the sleeve slowly slides down the green tiled wall, his bearded face tense under flickering dim light, barred window shadows deepening as distant footsteps echo, the camera slowly zooming in. To get this kind of prompt, it's very easy. I used Kling AI's DeepSeek feature to auto-generate the prompt for me. You just click the DeepSeek button, let Kling generate the prompt based on your image, then click Use Prompt and hit Generate. Super simple and effective. Of course, make sure to review the prompt each time before using it. Now, this next video had a great start, but the second half became blurry and distorted, so I trimmed that part out. That's completely understandable. At higher resolutions, these models sometimes struggle with facial clarity, especially in longer motion scenes. But this is a common limitation across all current AI tools in the image to video category. Let's move on to the next clip. This one turned out interesting too. I also trimmed the end for clarity. That section was actually quite funny. Then we have the 456 clip. For this one, I didn't even use a prompt. I just let Kling generate it based on the image, and it worked perfectly the first time. Same with the next video. No prompt used, but the result was surprisingly cinematic and high quality. Then again, I used the prompt. The camera rotates around the subject, and the result was another solid video. Now, I'll stop the voiceover here so you can hear the sound effects that Kling 2.1 automatically added to the videos. Next up are some videos that I couldn't include in the editing section. This is understandable, 
After all, you can't expect AI to generate perfect videos. If you generate more clips and know how to optimize your prompts, you'll reduce errors and also cut costs. One of the videos had too many faces and some distortion, so I couldn't use it. The Squid Game doll video. I had to regenerate it using version 2.1 to get better quality. The first version was made using 1.6, and you can clearly see the difference. The newer the version, the better the output, so always make sure you're using the latest version. For this video, I used the prompt. A man walks slowly forward, looking up toward the sky. This is a custom prompt I made because I wanted the man to walk toward a transparent piggy bank filled with cash. If you don't use a prompt, this is the kind of generic video you'll get. Then there's this video. I generated it several times using the prompt. A man slowly counts down with his fingers, first showing three, then two, then one, moving deliberately and with focus. I had to generate it three times, but the man's fingers still didn't follow the prompt properly. So I'll just trim the part that looks best and use it in the demo. Next is this video, where I use the same prompt to generate an image in ChatGPT. But here, I use text-to-video instead. And this is exactly why I don't recommend using text-to-video. The output will almost never be what you want. Controlling the results, especially for cinematic, story-driven scenes, is nearly impossible. That's why I always tell people, don't rely on text-to-video. You can try it out for fun, but it's not practical for cinematic scenes. Honestly, I could have made an even better demo, but I avoided horror scenes because I don't want to risk affecting my channel. I focus mainly on dramatic, suspenseful scenes. Alright, I think that pretty much sums up the image-to-video part using Kling AI 2.1 this time. Finally, I'll quickly go over the CapCut editing section. This is the full CapCut project I used to make the Squid Game 3 trailer demo. Nothing too fancy here. At the top layer, I added a text layer as a watermark, AI with Gary. I usually don't use watermarks in my demo videos, but this time it was necessary because it could easily be mistaken for another Squid Game video. Next is the caption text layer for parts with Korean dialogue. I use the Noto Serif font. If you're going for clarity and making captions, I recommend using a serif font. As for the audio, I reuse the original trailer's sound. You don't need to worry much about copyright policies for that if you're using it for a full-length video, it's minimal. But if you're making YouTube shorts, then yes, using that audio directly could be problematic on official channels. For the background music, I use Stop War Monument. This track is copyrighted, so you'll need a proper license if you want to include it in your video. The last audio layer is the direct sound that Kling AI 2.1 generated for me. I just boosted the volume slightly, by about plus 4 decibels. The rest of the work is pretty straightforward. You need to arrange the clips in a way that keeps the video engaging and logically structured. For example, the Squid Game doll video, the man removing his mask, the piggy bank full of money, and the character 456 in a suit. These are the clips that most closely resemble scenes from the Squid Game 3 trailer. I spaced these out throughout the timeline and even reused some of the actual Netflix trailer's text overlays. There's nothing too special here. Just make sure you've got enough footage, both images and videos, generated with Kling AI. Combine that with clean editing, and you can get high-quality videos like the one I made. If you're looking to grow on YouTube using AI-generated content, from cinematic films to stick figure animations, philosophy channels, or any faceless content optimized for the algorithm, I can support you more directly if you join the school community. Hope to see you there, and that's it for this video. There are lots of special videos coming your way. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.